was the president of the United States. I'd have a double jumper going across the White House gates. And a duck tracking every elementary school. In a mud hogging place of a swimming pool. Go! Smoke them if you got let your tires burn. The hell with conservation, cause we'll never learn. Come on, baby, rip it up for me. We'll have a motocross track, see the shiny sea. All right, what's up, guys? This is episode eight of the Upshift MX podcast. We're out here outside the Evans compound for now, um, taking out the beautiful, beautiful scenery. It just finished raining. Um, but, uh, yeah, before we get to the episode, we got a big announcement. We finally were able to get on iTunes. Um, there's been a bunch of emails sent back and forth, problem after problem. But somehow Mark, who's back behind the camera once again, got it all figured out, and we got the approval today. So go check out uh, episodes one through seven on iTunes, and then we'll have episode eight up for a minute. But our, uh, our guest today, you've probably seen him at uh, Hawaii Supercross, um, if not, you've probably seen him in some badass video throwing a whip or something. But Patrick Evans, what's up, man? Yeah, you didn't see me in Hawaii. I was in the back of the pack. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was awesome, man. We'll get to that a little bit later in the show. But, uh, yeah, just kind of want to talk about your whole coming up through the sport. I know you had said you kind of took a break there for a little while, but how you got into racing and then, uh, yeah, just what you've been up to, dude. It's uh, I, I haven't known you. Uh, I don't know you personally at all. It's the first time we've met. But uh, checking out your social media and stuff, you've done some some pretty cool projects and stuff, and you got Matt Style on a bike. So thank you. be a cool topic. Yeah, absolutely. How'd you get into racing? Uh, I started when I was like two, so I think I did my first race when I was three. I think my parents had to like lie about. I think you had to be four to race right. the PW class. They had like I think I was three and they had to lie. Now, where'd you say you were from originally? Uh, Annapolis, Maryland, but I, I grew up in Charlotte. Okay, so cool I was deal. racing in Charlotte like when I was two and stuff. What were some of the local tracks you used to go to? Uh, like Shelby Fairgrounds, okay. Parker Valley, Top Gun. Okay, yeah, um, Top Gun. I've been to a couple times. I think that's about it. Kathy's Creek, which I think still runs. Yeah. Iron City. Still yeah, they runs do some today. night races. I think Kathy's mm-hmm. Creek goes. Which I haven't been back. I went to Iron City when I moved back here from California. And it was cool. Like, yeah, I've never been out to Iron City I or Kathy's Creek. <laughs> <laughs> like the track's good, but it's like, yeah. So as far as growing up racing, you said you started pretty young. Were you guys like taking it seriously, or was it uh, kind of just we for never fun? really took it serious? Like we, like we took it serious like at local right. stuff. We never went to like a bunch of kids that grew up here went to nationals. So we kind of like figured there's no need to go to a national because we see these kids go to nationals right. and we can tell we're like Cooper Webb uh, grew up around here. Jordan Smith, they all we all kind of. They were like one class ahead of me. Okay. And then there were a couple Austin McKee. Yeah. I don't know if you know McKee. They 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 raced nationals and stuff. So like we kind of knew where we were at. We just had fun. We just raced locally. Nothing. Like yeah, I did really good locally, but cool deal. I didn't uh, didn't really have much interest in driving. So yeah, was it ever stuff. like a like you thought you were gonna be the the Ricky yeah, Carmichael, the James Stewart for, for a while? Sure. Yeah, definitely. But uh, I kind of got burnt out like around eleven. Like I just got on eighty fives when I kind of got over it. And, uh, like, a bunch of people were getting hurt. Like, Fonseca got paralyzed, yeah. and we were kind of friends with him. And then the one kid died at Parker Valley, so it was, like, right. a bunch of stuff kind of happened. My parents were that stoked on it, and I was kind of getting burnt out, too. So I was I kind of stopped, and I just did BMX for a while. Okay, so once you stepped away, did you move full-time into bicycle type? Yeah, I did. I was really serious into BMX for a little cool. bit. Cool. Okay, did you feel, I mean, like, you know, I mean, we know McGrath, um, I think Cole Seeley, even uh, Dean Wilson, he rides some BMX. And Justin stuff. Hill. Justin Hill, does he ride BMX? His dad, like, Monty Turndown, dude. He invented the turndown. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. I need to study up. i got to learn my history a little yeah, bit better. Do. That's awesome, though. <laughs> so uh, you, most of those guys go from BMX to moto, going from moto to BMX. Well, you always ride a BMX bike when you're, you know, like, so you, you ride, ride motocross I mean, and then you ride BMX all Yeah, because we were talking about your, like, natural style. Do you feel like that kind of transferred into moto, uh, or do you feel like they just came together at the same time? Eh, uh, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I think they're kind of too – I don't really think you can really relate. Them, you don't think they translate, really? Not really. So when you stepped away from moto, was it a pretty easy, like, just sold the bikes and then just got bicycles? Yeah, I was just over it and just kept riding my BMX bike. Well, I had a BMX bike. You know, right. Everyone has a BMX bike, so I just kept riding that. Now, where is, it's different as far as doing, like, the freestyle stuff and then doing the races. I was doing freestyle stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you were doing the trick. What was, what was the biggest thing you ever pulled? Uh, I was doing, like, three double whips over boxes and stuff. Like, I, I got pretty serious and, like, front flips and... Now you said you all that stuff. yeah you spend most of your time you kind of half and half between Carolina and California not when until I was start? older okay, yeah not until so. I was like I moved to California when I was seventeen or eighteen what part of California uh, Irvine okay cool yeah 
and then I lived out there for like two years or something like that, and then I moved back here. I still fly back and forth now because I, I kind of like the, which I like better. Yeah, probably California, I guess. Yeah, but I can't be in California all the time, or else it kind of drives me crazy. Really? So yeah. Now, as far as the moto guys over there that you've kind of become close with, how did you meet all them? Just being at the local tracks, or I wouldn't really say I'm really close with anybody out really? there for the most. I mean. I have, like yeah, I, mean, I know a bunch. Like everyone's cool, right? But I'm not like it's not like I'm best friends with a bunch of people out there. Like I know Colton Hager really well. Okay, cool. And uh, like Vicky Colden, and that's probably other than like the sponsors, like Air right. and Air, Wacker and stuff out there. But like those are like the two big riders that I. Cool. Now, what are the places, places you normally go ride at in California pretty regularly? Uh, it's the local tracks for the most part, and then uh, I'll go with Vicky to the Metal Militia compound. Okay. Where that ramp is, and that was like, that's like the ramp I kind of learned to hit ramps on was that with her and then uh yeah just the local like paula milestone all that stuff and now like, as I've, far as what kind of got you itching to get back on a bike was there something that well i moved to california it was for like video stuff okay and then uh my buddy rico uh at medterra now uh had a 250 in his garage like an extra bike in mm-hmm. his garage and i was just like oh man like I kind of I wanted to ride again. Like I didn't have any interest when I was 11 and stopped. Right. But then when I was probably like 14 or something, I started wanting to ride again. But I just never got a bike. And then Rico had an extra bike, and then eventually we went to like Ocotillo one time, and I rode it. And like I was probably 19 or something. And like I remember riding down the driveway. We were out in like a friend's house at an Ocotillo, and like you ride over to the desert and stuff. Mm-hmm. And like I was remember riding down the driveway, and I was like swapping out. <laughs> like I couldn't like I remember it being really easy, and then it was like totally different oh dude that took me a while to get really gone. yeah i was got, bad. kind of had to get it back underneath you i now. knew i would get there but like it was so how quick after that did you get a bike well i rode his bike and then i bought it from him oh, okay. so then cool. i rode that thing and i like he let me drive his truck out to milestone from irvine hell yeah and i would just ride like the vet track and kind of gradually get back into it definitely started out slow for sure i mean i remember like all right i jumped everything on the milestone vet track that took, right. a, that took a month or whatever and then uh and then one day it probably just was like all right now i'm pretty on it right back on it, and then it started being like slower the past year it's like right now you get a little bit better and better right now were you because i mean i know you had said you were kind of a racer more when you were younger Mm. um did you kind of want to avoid that as you were going into the races now were you like oh i just kind of want to ride for fun and do my own yeah i just have no interest in there's no i don't see the point right like if i were to race i'd be i could make a night show but i'd be like Right. If if I I don't think I could make a main right now, but if if I did, I'd be like last place. Right. You know what I mean? It's like what's the point? What's the point? You know? Makes sense. Which I mean, I get some people do it because you know you make yeah twelve hundred bucks to make a night show and well, that's cool. and you can make a little bit of I mean at the end of the day you're traveling and right. all that stuff and it's like I don't know it's kind of like like people get like I saw Ben Lemay GoPro was up and Ben Lemay rips yeah, like that dude's, gnar- <laughs> that dude's really gnarly but like the the fans of the sport they like oh so this is what it looks like to be a loser in this like all the comments were like yeah, yeah. so it's like if, if you go to supercross and you're not the top 10 which is like unreal fast like you gotta be gnarly you just get you know Headed shit on, on yeah. so it's like yeah uh, i feel like we have some of the most like cut it's the, like the worst fans. yeah they're just yeah, uh, they're like bad. they're all and they're really good at like being your best friend until you screw up and then it's yeah it's the like super it bandwagony and yeah like, yeah it's, it's uh so what got you into, I don't even know, what would you call it? Just free riding, just throwing whips? Like, how did you, we were kind of talking about how you discovered to, to hit ramps and throw a whip. What got you into into that? Um, I don't know. I think when I started riding again, um, I don't know, just, that's kind of hard to say. I mean, I, I don't know, just what do you like to do to go ride? Like, I always dreamed, like, I didn't grow up in California, so, like, right. going to the hills was, like, something I always that's watched in movies. That's what I was going to like, stuff like that and go out and those. Well, I always watched it, and it was always something that, like, like I would, ne- I always raced when I was a kid, so it was kind of like forbidden fruit right. a little bit. And I was like, all right, well, I finally go out to like Ocotillo, go to the hills, and that was just kind of cool. And then, yeah, and then I, uh, yeah, I kind of like became friends with Vicky, and then you know that whole crew of people like Twitch and and Darren and all that stuff that ride out there, and just that just, that just seems way more fun to me than right. And going, I mean, I like going to tracks too, but I don't really like racing that much. Yeah, I don't feel like the stopwatch nationals are necessarily where it's at. Yeah, I'm not that into it. So when you were like you're throwing these whips and stuff like that, how's the progression? Like, did you just one day just decide to to throw it upside down, or was it a slow grab? I mean, I just like like hitting jumps. Like my whole life, I was just like hitting jumps, and then yeah, I mean, I remember trying at Milestone Apollo and sucking, looking like a goon for really? a while. Yeah, and then uh, I mean, I don't I don't really think the whips I do now really look that good, but like they put me to shame. I'll put it like that. I mean, thank you, but I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But um, as far as like when I. Th- 
they started being kind of big like i don't know uh good old milestone probably just leaning off like they have such mellow little takeoffs you can start like once you like lean in a couple times and you start really getting it then, it then you can kind of do it on anything you know no, Turn I, don't. I, I gotta figure it out i gotta just grow a set and actually i think you it. just lean over and yeah. it happens for the, Hope for the best it's yeah. not that hard but uh and the ramps so, are a little more tricky i think to yeah do you said it. there was a little yeah. bit more technique to those yeah they're just they're kind of yeah i don't know they're different because i like, feel like they just throw you kind of different just, well you got to go on really slow and then you got to trust that you're giving the right amount like because you go in so slow and then you give all the power like right on the ramp so you kind of got to like have faith that you're going the right speed you know because it feels like you're going way too slow to clear the gap really like even in hawaii i did the freestyle shows mm-hmm. in between like I, the first couple like i was a little nervous in the crowd and everything and i went so deep a couple of times like those jumps like 75 ramps really aren't that big <laughs> you I, go pretty slow they I, look I, big but they aren't that big because i see the videos on instagram and it's just like burp, 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 like you're yeah, just nothing, barely yeah, going yeah, and you're right at the yeah. end basically if your front wheel is on the takeoff you pin it then you'll make it that's yeah, crazy. Had, did you ever go to Hog Heaven? It was in Godwin, uh-huh. North Carolina. They had a that was the first place I ever saw that had like a freestyle ramp, no, and they just had a huge that. double. It was actually like in this dude's. He was a hog farmer, and he had a. It was a pretty sick track, and then he had a big freestyle ramp. And uh, Dylan Easton was the kid's name, and he used to throw some pretty serious whips. And that was the first time I'd ever seen like a ramp in person, and it is definitely different. Yeah, that's sure. how they were cool. It just kind of caught my attention, just because I never did it, and they looked fun. Now, I was doing a little stalking through your social media earlier before we came over here, and I saw something something with the X Games, and we were kind of talking about that earlier. You, what, what was that? It was like flat tracking. Oh, uh, yeah, that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was a, yeah, that was like a year. That was a year ago, I think. Yeah. I don't, I'm not doing it this year. I got invited to try the team that Suicide Machine Co. company that has a, they have like custom Harleys and stuff, okay, and I did cool. it with them. Um, they're just cool dudes, and they let me ride their bikes a couple times, and I went to the Idaho one last year, the qualifier, mm-hmm. which is like a concrete, tiny little circle track. And like, they give me like the biggest bike. Like really? it's really heavy and it's pretty gnarly. And I don't know what I'm doing on those things. Totally I'm, different. I've never even ridden a street bike on the street before really? ever, like nothing. So like. How did then, that come to be? You just one day just. I was just friends with those guys. Oh, okay, they just yeah, they were friends with up. my friends in California. Right. And I met them. They're super cool. Like rad dudes, Aaron and Sean. And, uh. Yeah, they just let me. I've crashed their bike so many times now. <laughs> just like, go for it. I get worked on those things. Yeah, because I get like antsy. Like, I don't know. It, that's a, that's. I feel like that sport is just is, if you're willing to send it, like you'll be okay. Like, it's. I don't. I don't want to say there's there's not no skill involved. There's definitely skill involved for sure. And bike setups big too. Really? Yeah, bike setups huge. And that's. I think my bikes never been that set because <laughs> they just go out there and send it. But yeah, I tried to do X Games last year, and I I was like the last spot out. Like literally. They took top 40. I was like 41st. You kind of like, that's it after that. It's like, yeah, um, it's in He me called or? me like a week ago to go to see if, uh, to do the qualifier mm-hmm. again. But he was like, you got to fly yourself out to Idaho. And I was uh. like, eh. And I think it was the same. It was like the weekend. It was like a couple days right before the high point 125 race. Okay. And I was kind of like, yeah, I'm really just trying. If case, I'm weighing right. which one I want to do, I'd, I'd rather focus on the 125 race because odds are I'm just going to work myself at the. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, odds are I won't make it in and I'll get hurt at the hooligan thing. Yeah, those thing. things are like putting a tank between your legs and just yeah, they're, trying to they're big bitches <laughs> yeah i can only imagine and so um now you just we just got back from hawaii supercross how did that whole idea come to be and how'd you get well that was a, that? another x games related thing because okay. i was talking to eric pernard who okay. puts on x games it's right super cool and i was talking to him at best whip and like uh i was sending him best whip footage and i was trying to get in for that and like it was kind of felt like it was close and then right. just, and then it's like oh we just can't make it happen because there was just there's too many like sponsored guys that are getting in. Like right. you know, they have sponsors to keep happy for the broadcast. And Absolutely. There's also there's a ton of kids that are more deserving than I am to, to be in there. So I don't know though. I mean, you're definitely up there. I appreciate it, but I it doesn't it doesn't really bother me as long as there's like a as long as I see the list come out, it's like a good list of right. Like oh yeah, that kid deserved a chance. At least, yeah, know, at then least I, I'm totally it. fine with it. But uh, since he was doing, I was talking to him about that. And then I was like, oh, well, can I do Hawaii too? Because I saw Hawaii got posted right. on Vital. It's just like oh, Hawaii Supercross. I was like, that'd be cool. I haven't done a race and I don't know how long, but, <laughs> but I'll, I'll do that. So cool. it was kind of funny because I'd never did, it's not like I was an amateur and did pro sport. Right. Or any, like, I mean, I'm a pro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I was just. So was there any, any intimidation going into the race? Like hadn't lined up on a gate um, in a while? Just, I, I mean, because you ride around with the, the JGR guys pretty Yeah, regularly. I kind of knew where I was at ish, but I also like, I haven't trained like I've never even tried to do more in the past two years. I started riding after eight years off. I haven't really tried to like go fast. Right. I just been trying to have fun. Have fun. 
so like i was like all right i took like a month before hawaii like i probably had maybe four weeks to be like okay i'm not gonna be fat i'm gonna drink less diet coke <laughs> still some and then like i got on like the spin bike and you know right. did because i just didn't want to embarrass myself like Eric, Absolutely. eric's yeah, let me come in the At least, least i can do is not be a road market right. you know, a hazard out there so. yeah i think it what was it like the w training facility or something like that they had posted you in there doing yeah something? well that was like the day before that was like when you go <laughs> that's like when you brush your teeth before the dentist is the next day but I, I was yeah. just on like the spin bike and bought to jgr and bud man all those dudes helped me kind of i did like their program a little bit and then uh johnny o helped me in suspension oh cool so okay. i actually got like because i've been riding supercross on stock suspension just because right. i didn't care i just was having fun and, like, I wouldn't do the big three three lines on stock suspension because I had no reason to. Right. But then it's like, all right, I did Hawaii. And then the next day I went out and just hit all the three threes. It's like, all right, I got a reason to actually try now. Actually do something. So I, yeah. I did, like, a, a month of actually trying to do something. And I probably picked up a lot of time. But I think if I had, like, another month, we actually could have done something. Could have done not way better, but. So is that, like, a little bit. motivator? Or are you looking to maybe do some mm, of these? Not really. really? Um, I did pretty I mean, I beat, like, a couple dudes that have been doing it a long time and right stuff. so it was like nice but um the thing that sucked is the first the practice the free practice i jumped on the dude's bike that was super cool it's a random hawaiian let me ride his bike really and uh i put all my parts and my suspension on there and it felt like a harley i went out the first practice and like i was a little tight like, i was a little because you know i'm in the same practice as brayton and right. jimmy and all that like i've been riding with jimmy and stuff but like at the same time, it's like, okay. Yeah, there's still an element I have showing to, up like, with those guys. I, I mentally have to, like, prepare myself. Like, you belong out here, like, right. because I probably don't, but. <laughs> got to do a little bit of coaching, yeah. I <laughs> never did, like I said, I never did amateur races. I, right. I'm not really, yeah, by definition, quite, quite a of, jump. I never, like, became a pro. Right. But, you know, whatever. Um, Go for it, yeah. I, I knew I was, I knew I could have the same lap time as a guy. I, I could make a night show. Yeah. I'm sure. But, um, not to sound arrogant at all, but. Well, I mean, I could probably got, make yeah, a night show. I don't know. Yeah, I might if you've die. got the who, speed to make it. Yeah. I don't know. I'd like to think that. But I didn't, so I wasn't like worried about too bad, but right. I still felt like, okay, don't make an ass out of yourself. <laughs> and, um, but I went out and the bike felt like a Harley and I was like, what is the deal? I put all my stuff on it. And the track was like pretty bad in the first practice because they were like still trying to like water. The dirt out in Hawaii is bad. Really? But we knew it was going to be bad, so it was fine. What t- is it like hard pack? Is it's it- like it's like clumpy, hard pack, breaks away. It's really it's hard to even describe. Huh. It's like black too. It's like really? weird. Yeah, but either way, the track wasn't that good in free practice, but like it was okay. And then there's a whole nother fiasco of Bubba Polly landing on a bike and going down. I look behind me and Bubba Polly's sliding across the track, forty feet knocked out. So that was kinda like a little bit of a wake up call to yeah. me. Like I haven't been racing. I kinda forgot that you're around other people. Right other people can go down and stuff so like it's not always in your control it kind of like that that checked me for the day like right away first practice like second lap i jumped the finish and looked behind me about Polly playing on the dude's bike and i was like that and i barely missed his bike really yeah chisholm was in front of me barely missed it i barely missed it jimmy barely missed it and then uh yeah that was kind of like a okay like a wake-up call yeah you know, i got be careful here and then uh but I couldn't figure out why the bike felt like that. And, I, and then I looked down, I had a linkage. He had like a ride engineering linkage thing. Really? So I noticed that like so bad. And Jimmy was giving me crap teachers. You didn't notice that. I'm like, <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, it felt. So that took a little while to get used to, as dumb as that sounds. Jimmy was on a 14, so no excuses. Yeah. He just, <laughs> I heard about that. He That's jumped pretty... on a 2014 and was actually killing it. So no, I really don't have much of a leg to stand on. But um, second practice, they watered the track really bad right before our, like we were the first group and then the second group went. Mm-hmm. And they watered it really bad for the for our group. But I'm really bad at, like, riding slick. Really? Like, I'm super bad at finding And my suspension was probably stiffer than anybody's there because I just am not good in whoops. Okay. So I wanted super stiff in the whoops. I don't care if I'm slow everywhere right. else. I just want to make it through the whoops. And so I was, like, washing really bad. And then uh, actually in free practice, I crashed, too. I washed the front end out really? and hit my okay. arm pretty bad. And then I bent the clutch lever. I didn't know it at the time because it was, like, the last lap of free practice. And I actually felt okay in free practice. But I bent the clutch lever, like, around my – fingers so like i bruised my fingers up and everything because it like was bent around them and then i went out for the time practice Mm -hmm. and it was super wet to begin with so that's not good for me right and then (laughs) uh and then i realized the clutch was hitting my fingers because it was bent in so i stalled the bike like five times like i tipped i would go into a turn and would just stall and i fell over and then i like i'm rolling through the whoops trying to get it back together and just stalls and like so i ended up getting like one lap in that was like not good and right. I, I was like a second slower than everybody well that's definitely got to mess with oh it's super yeah, it was it was not everything, yeah. especially on that track too because it was tight and like it was not i i was actually hoping to do a fast lap to be like oh then uh 
I figured I could probably do one lap better than I could do a race. Right. So I kind of thought I'll qual- to make a statement. I thought I kind of qualify kind of high, not like right, like maybe top ten, maybe right, probably not, but like I beat a couple guys. Yeah. And then yeah, my t- dead last. <laughs> pretty much. Or I beat the Hawaiian guys, but like pretty much dead last. And then uh, so I yeah I qualified last, so that was awesome. And so then, what was like when you guys even showed up? Because it I saw a couple things like with Alex Ray and Tyler Bowers and some of that they seemed to have like a pretty big check in for the riders and stuff. Was this, was there like a big fan group waiting for everybody at the end? Like, oh, the pit party thing. Yeah, yeah. There was like a three hour pit party. How was that? They had seven thousand people come through. Like the fans were sick, but yeah, we ended up doing like an autograph signing for three hours. So That's I was good. I was like done by the time. Yeah, I was done by the time we did the man. I was not feeling too good. Really? Yeah. But then I did the I did the freestyle practice. Okay. So that kind of kind of helped rejuvenate me a little bit. Right. But then yeah, we did the the autograph thing for a while and it was super hot and i, I kind of had a headache going in the first one i wasn't feeling that good i was like asking enough for ibuprofen before the first <laughs> race and then uh the first race i think i was kind of like I, I haven't really like i said i haven't done laps ever like i've just been having just fun kinda doing your thing yeah. so like i'm still learning how to like go fast for a set amount of time and it's a 12 lap main which that track was pretty short but it basically was like seven minutes and uh i kind of had to think like okay pick a pace and run it which probably like kyle peters I, I was like yo i picked a pace i think it was just too slow he's like yeah you don't pick a pace you just go till you're tired right you i'm like oh well whatever i didn't know <laughs> yeah but i was i don't know i kind of picked like probably too slow a pace in the first one i because i've i finished and i was like man i feel fine Had like, a more i time. literally everyone else went back to the pit took a break i stayed on the track they unrolled the rug for the freestyle ramp and then i started hitting the freestyle ramp for the show so like everyone else got a break which I'm not complaining because right. I opted to do that because yeah. it was fun. I had way more fun all night <laughs> hitting the, the ramp. Doing that, yeah. yeah, like uh, James Carter, Brody Wilson, um, all those freestyle dudes were right. cool enough to let me ride on that and That's throw awesome. some whips. And, of course, Ronnie Mack. But, um, the legend. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I would stay on the track, hit the ramp. Then I got one break while they did the local Hawaiian race. Okay. So I got, like, probably a 10-minute break. Everyone else got, like, a 20-minute break. And then the second race, I – did okay and uh same thing though i probably picked a pace that was just a little too slow i think i could have been like half a second faster each lap if i had just what were your and I was like kinda, were you usually towards oh, the I back or nah, i didn't really the second actually i got a really good jump the really? second start i actually was like probably one of the first to the turn mm-hmm. but i was on the outside and just got just got pushed wide totally yeah yeah and then there's actually some carnage every time too so you had to go like over a bike <laughs> the, now, did they have were there some locals that were in that yeah main event too Okay. Yeah, they were in the back though. Wow. Yeah. yeah. One dude actually hit the first pra- the first gate. That dude just came over on me and just really? hit. Yeah, I was like, "What are you doing?" Trying to prove something or something I don't like know. that. I guess hometown race. Yeah, it's like, dude, come on. <laughs> were people stoked to have it in Hawaii though? Like, were the they fans th- were awesome. The were people they thinking were that was sick. something that was going to come back? Or? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Because awesome. they didn't have much time to market it either. So well, that's like, what I was going to say. Because like I've seen some videos and people have been like, "Oh, nobody was there." Like, yeah, but it was like a two month thing. It just but was yeah, like start done. Yeah, it didn't seem like it was promoted near as much as like a race around it was a last be. minute thing i yeah. think if they promoted it again it'd be huge and the cool. people were really cool but uh yeah my starts were whatever i didn't even set my start device on the first one I really think. yeah because i was on like i was last qualifier right so i was like way outside and it was just no i was like there's no point i'm just gonna roll off and see what happens i actually came out pretty good because you go inside everyone else is going for it which is what i did the second one second one i, I actually finished higher so i got a better gate pick and uh, I got a good jump, but I got pushed out. And then same thing. I think I was kind of focused on the freestyle shows, too. I was about to say, were you kind of having some fun with that? I was kind of focused on, like, not being, like, you got to save a little energy, which I shouldn't have been. Well, whatever. I should, you know, whatever. I well, I mean, you're down there. I was you're having fun. Both. Whatever. I had more fun, fun doing yeah. that anyway. And it was, like, a better show. I think people had more fun watching me do that than they did watching me race. Right. Like, back to the pack. But, uh, and then I did the second show. And uh, then I was done with them. I wasn't going to do the last one. Or the last one went before our last main. So I was like, all right, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to. And then the third one, I was like, all right, I started feeling good. The ibuprofen kicked in. <laughs> and, like, I was done with that. I was, like, ready to send it on the third one. And then not a great start, but, like, whatever. Same thing all night. And then I was actually, like, I passed, like, I think I passed, like, three people in the first lap or something. And uh, I felt, like, really good in the last one. I was like, all right, I'll 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 probably do three spots better than I have been or something. Like, two, three spots, whatever. Nothing crazy, but mm-hmm. better. And then, like, three laps, and I washed the front out in the same spot that I did and just weeded myself. And uh, by the time I got up, I was a lap down, and I was like, I'm just going to pull off. I'm not right. going to get in the way of these guys. Right. Because right. the track was so short, you're going to get lapped 18 more times, especially I had, like, my clutch was down. And, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's like, so I just pulled off. But All in all, sounds it like was pretty fun. good yeah, yeah, no, sounds like it was a good time. Free, I'm glad I did the freestyle show because that made it all worth it. Yeah. Now, yeah. Did you guys do anything after the races and stuff like that? I had to pull my bike apart. I had to pull a suspension, put the dude's bike back to the stock. 
and put all my stuff and I had like two bags and had a, we didn't get out me and Jimmy didn't get out of there until 1 30 and then we helped Eric push all the other guys bikes everyone else left me and Jimmy would help push the bikes up the tunnel really but then they put the oil and cooling out of them so we couldn't start them. we had to push them up the hill and get them in the crate Jeez. yeah so we were we weren't part yeah, of the day yeah we partied like Thursday or I partied Thursday okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I you partied, have a little bit of fun I partied right? like kind of, not even really partied but you yeah. was there. I was made yeah. an appearance. I had fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, we were talking a little bit about as far as your future plans. You're talking about doing some of the 125 dream races. Which rounds are you looking at doing? All star races. All star races. Dream races are only in Washu. Okay. Thank in the Washu, people get really upset about it. I okay. Think. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, I'm doing High Point, um, Florida the next weekend, and then a break, and then Red Bud, then Butts Creek. Any expectations going in? Just have fun. Um, I'd probably have a little bit higher of an expectation on this one, just because it's like. Hawaii was Supercross, which I've been riding Supercross for a month, realistically. Right. And everyone's gnarly. Like, how did that some, compare to? Because you've been riding the JGR Supercross track, I'm assuming. Um, yeah. Uh, how did and that compare? Cooper's to old one too, the okay, Earhart's. Cool. Um, it was. Uh, it was actually pretty. They everyone they made it sound like it was gonna be super. It was easy, but it was like not a joke by any means. It was, right. Yeah, it was you like said a, the whoops were actually pretty gnarly. The whoops were pretty good. I mean, they were whoops. They were right. real whoops. I thought they were going to be like, oh, I don't have to worry about hitting right. whoops because they're just going to be a joke. And no, they were, you had to get up on them and you could definitely go down them. Um, for like really good guys, they were a joke probably. Right. But I mean, no, they were, they were kind of slick too. So you got to be careful. Like the whoops were kind of gnarly. And then there's like a two, three that wasn't, it wasn't like JGR test track hard, but it was, you know, it was something. It was a pretty good track. The track actually, by the end, the night show, the track was actually sick. They did really? good. Yeah. For making the dirt that they had, they made that thing pretty dialed. Cool. And so you think you might have a little better shot on the outdoors just because you've been doing it more? Um, Yeah. And I think it's probably a little bit less stacked of a field. <laughs> it's you think not, so? You're probably not lining up with Justin Brayton, Sipes, Bowers, Alessi. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's probably, I mean, there's still going to be a bunch of fast dudes. I mean, I'm not going to claim anything because I'm not that fast and I don't really try to be, but. Now, how a, do, what are those motors set up as far as time wise? Is it four laps? Four that's laps. That's why I'm okay. like, that's okay. why I kind of <laughs> think I have a little bit more of a shot. Okay. But we'll see. I don't know. I could probably be way, I'm probably way slower than I think. As soon as I start getting a little bit of confidence, I get beat right back down <laughs> on the speed thing. So I could go out and just make a complete fool of myself once again. But Well, I mean, I think you've got it figured out as far as just having fun with it. And so. Yeah, I mean, just, yeah, I don't like. Really now, care. as far as pretty much like your free riding stuff like that, I see you throw a lot of whips. Are you, are you looking into doing any freestyle stuff like that? You're trying to learn a backflip or something like that? No, I, tried, I tried to backflip. Really? <laughs> you never saw that? Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, I tried to backflip once. Oh, we're going to have to look at that video after this. Is it, is it bad? Um, It's stupid. I was at the Sand Pit place. Okay. And uh, it wasn't like, I think everyone like thought that I had some master plan of doing a backflip. I was just riding there and was like, I feel like you backflip up that. I was like, you won't do it. And I, I shoveled it for like a minute and then I tried to backflip. And I went way too f- I, Everything was fine. Everyone's like, well, if you stayed on, you wouldn't fall. Like, no, I wouldn't. If I stayed on, I was 50 feet in the air landing on flat. I would have died. Oof. Yeah, like, there's no way I would have been okay. And, and a lot of people say, oh, you, like, you just jumped off. Like, no, I pulled and nothing happened because I was going way too fast. Everything I did was perfect. I don't care what anyone says. Everything <laughs> I did was absolutely perfect, but I went too fast. I just for- forgot to go really slow. Like, every- I was so focused on like hands on, right. feet on, look straight back all that stuff that I forgot like oh yeah I go really slow what so I mean? went up and it was like it was supposed to be like a mini flip medium yeah, flip it like ended up being basically a full size <laughs> flip because <laughs> I, I went up is way too fast and like clutch dump first and just and I went nothing kind of it was coming around but I was going so much higher than I thought I would right. that it felt really slow so I jumped off I landed on my feet but I bent like my triple clamps I think I bent my fork still didn't get hurt <laughs> I was fine I landed on my feet I was wow fine. okay yeah. Yeah. Dang, that's cool. Well, shoot, I'd go for it again then, I guess. Eh, not with the damage I did that bike. Really? <laughs> I don't get that many free parts. Yeah, I understand that. So, uh, well, dude, I appreciate you coming on this episode. It's been cool to kind of catch up. Like I said, I wasn't uh, super familiar with your story, but I like kind of just have fun doing what you're doing. Is there anything else you're really planning on getting into besides the dream races? All-star races. All-star races. races. Okay, got to make sure I get this um, right. Yeah, I think I want to film some more video stuff for sure. Um, Where are some of the places you've gotten to film at? Uh, we filmed that Bombay to Belmont fast okay. house video um, for, or we went to Bombay, Bombay Beach in Salton mm-hmm. City, mm-hmm. which is like way inland in California. It's like this abandoned town and it's like pretty crazy. That was cool. And then we went to uh, Colton Hager's house and filmed there and then uh, Beaumont. But I'd like to go film in Beaumont a lot more. And uh, even though Darren's about to end all filming in Beaumont because really? his real moto is going to come out and he's going to make just everyone look like an idiot i'm sure <laughs> heck yeah well, how did you get hooked up with the fast house guys you told me earlier but um i went to surfer cross which okay. is like jeremy albrecht's event yeah. where they have the surfer and a 
racer yeah. team up and uh they were the fast house sponsors that event and like my buddy was friends with the art director there and i just kind of became friends with him and then uh i, I did get a surf across which i don't really think that had much to do with it but i just yeah they just kind of you a surfer beforehand no <laughs> <laughs> well, actually i won the surf contest there no way okay yeah true but uh no I, you know i think uh that and then i did the 125 butts creek race and then that was kind of like put me on the radar a little bit and then uh, they, i think they saw my instagram stuff and yeah, they're all cool dudes. Cool deal, man. Well, that's awesome. Well, uh, like I said, I appreciate you coming on. I uh, I like your stuff, man. Like I said, I wasn't super familiar, but I've been checking it out, and I'm definitely a big fan now. So uh, thank you. I'm going to stay in touch. And, yeah, man, I wish you the best of luck. Yeah, thank you, dude. Cool dude. Yeah, absolutely, guys. This has been Episode 8 of the Upshift MX Podcast. Uh, like I said, we're on iTunes now, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify. So I think, I think we've pretty much got all the bases covered. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, tell me who you want to see next. We'll see you next time.